Okay, so today we are discussing RESTful services in Drupal 8. Okay, so how to use Drupal 8 to serve RESTful services. I will not spend a whole lot of time explaining what RESTful services are, what REST is, but uh, the very short is that you can go to a certain URL and uh, if you issue a GET request, then um, you can get basically, so for example, here's an example. I went to node slash one format JSON and I got the node in a JSON format. So this is the get request. Similarly, if I issue a post request to this URL, which I cannot do simply in this using this browser, I need something else. But imagine if I could issue a post request with this kind of a body, body that is JSON, body then it will create that node so and it will be to this url so in other words a rest allows you to create um, data with post uh, retrieve data with get uh, update data with patch or put or and remove data with delete http request so that's not an exact definition of rest but it's pretty close to what we are doing okay so we, what we will do is uh, we will use Drupal 8 uh, to serve such web services which are RESTful. Okay. Um, why would we want to do that? Because we want to write JavaScript based applications. And as you know, JavaScript based applications can run AJAX requests, which um, fit very nicely with RESTful services. And then uh, Ajax again JavaScript uh, Ajax request can easily send and receive JSON data, which works very nicely with the RESTful services once again. Okay, so with that background and motivation in mind, let's see how Drupal 8 does that. So I have a very uh, empty site foo.demo.t8. It has nothing. If I log in, uh, admin, and what I have is just a, a, an empty side. I mean, as you can see, there is no, no content. Okay. So first thing is before we even do any restful operation, let's actually create, populate this site a little bit. So to populate it, what we will do is we will use the devil generate module. So rush dl devil. Now, if you're wondering why am I downloading trash dl and not composer require is because this is the the other project where i did not use composer this is drush managed not composer managed uh, it is easier to do that for throwaway sites uh, something that you don't want to control in git that you don't want to version control in git you can just do it this way okay so i downloaded devil and then I am going to enable the module that is devil generate. So devil generate is the module that will allow us to uh, easily create content. And now if I go to configuration, development, uh, generate content. So before I generate nodes, because gen generate content basically means generating nodes. So before I generate nodes, I want to generate users and terms. So let's go to users, generate 10 users. Okay. That's it. So this will, now when we go to people, we see random looking names, totally random names of users some Latin names, okay. Similarly, if we want to generate some taxonomy terms, I click on generate terms, and I will generate 20, 15 terms, let's say. I generate, and it generated under tags, so structure, taxonomy, tags, list terms. And there you go, you got some randomly generated Exonomy terms. Finally, let's generate some content. 
which means nodes in this case. We'll create articles, 50 of them will do. And the rest of it is reasonable, let's leave it at that. So that generated 50 nodes. Once you do that, now the content page will have 50 of these and they are authored by these random users. So if you go to the front page, yeah, you got some random content on the front page. Okay, so now we will be able to see the um, RESTful services serving these nodes. Next thing we have to do is we have to if we go to the extend page. Now instead of doing rush, I'm going to show you here in in the extend page uh, what. As you can see, Drupal Core comes with a huge number of these modules. The ones that we are interested in. Well, before I enable a module, let me show you where, because I have a node, sorry, oops, because I have a node that is node 1, that's my node 1, and I should be able to say question mark underscore format equal to JSON. This is how Drupal 8 works. This is where it serves. Uh, underscore format equal to JSON. Message not acceptable format JSON. Basically, it doesn't recognize that JSON is an acceptable uh, configured format. So that's where we have to bring in the appropriate modules and the appropriate configuration. So we go and look for the rest module. Just type rest in the filter. There it is, just install that. He says, you must enable the serialization module to install RESTful web services. The serialization module is needed to convert a node data, node PHP array into, sorry, PHP object into JSON. So that's what serialization module does, so it's needed. Let's say yes. It could be JSON or it could even be XML, both. So once we did that, let's reload. And we still get the same problem. The reason why we get the same problem is, although RESTful services are now enabled, they do not know that requesting a node slash one with this format should actually, is, is that allowable or not? For that, we need one more module and that module is not in core and that is rest ui module which as you can see is not here so let's download that the rest ui module is not needed for actually running restful services it's only needed for configuring restful services if you don't know how to configure it using simple yaml files because we don't know how to do it with yaml file imports Let's just use the REST UI. So REST UI got downloaded. If I now refresh this, and there it is, REST UI. Provides the user interface to manage REST resources. Let's check this checkbox. And as soon as that is uh, enabled, we can now go to REST UI configure or we can go to configuration um, there, web services, REST, same place. And here we have, this is where you enable REST resources. What are REST resources? Resources are basically entities that serve themselves over the web, such as nodes and comments and users and so on and so forth. But actually the full list is right here. The, right now, none of the resources are enabled. But look, the library of resources that Drupal provides is comprehensive. Actions, 
base field override blocks all of these things are available over rest comment comment type which means the bundle for comments contact form contact message which means an individual contact message content content type the content is that these are the nodes content type which is of course the control content type as you can imagine what that is custom blocks handwritten blocks custom block type custom i mean this is a very very long you know here is five files uh, menus image styles form modes roles search page shortcut link everything text editor formats oh sorry text editor and text format to user user registration i mean some of these things i don't even know entity view view and view mode so view is i guess views view so as you can see it's a very long list of these we are probably going to concern ourselves with only a few so this is obviously of interest node with a node id i should be able to get it so let's enable that i enable this now i can set the the this configuration either across the board for the whole resource that is node resource or and then say well i want to serve json and i want to do get and i authentication provider wise i want to do cookie and i'll explain what that means and the authentication provider um or i can be more granular per method so which means you go per method this requires json and post will do xml and so on and so forth so, so this is more granular i'm not going to get so granular i'm going to stay at the resource level okay all right so give me one second so at the resource level you simply say i want to enable gets let's not enable uh, the rest uh, post and delete and patch yet now i want to enable only one request format which is json and i want the authentication providers now let's talk about that this is in case of get it's there's not much to worry about because most of your nodes should be accessible to anybody uh, especially if they are published but if th this required some kind of authentication you need to needed to establish your identity there are many ways to establish your identity one is how if you are logged into drupal itself you will have a um, a cookie so let me show you if i go to inspect element and i and i issue any um request let me just refresh this page and that will issue it let's go to network and then i will just uh, refresh the page if you look at the original request and look for request headers you see this cookie that cookie is telling drupal who i am so by checking the this cookie um uh, checkbox i'm saying as long as they the incoming request has this cookie that's good enough now you might say so isn't that obvious isn't isn't it that every request should have this cookie anyways I mean how is that why is that not the only option the answer is it is because i'm using drupal directly in the browser that's why the cookie is there but if this application was not a drupal was not drupal calling restful service but a non drupal application calling restful service then it won't have this cookie in that situation what what do we do so therefore we we need other options and the other option is basic authentication or oauth and so many others we will come to that in a few minutes but let's leave it at alone for now uh, just remember to uh, just remember that cookie means this cookie the cookie that authenticates me to drupal let's save this configuration now that we have saved the configuration we come back to it and we say i want node slash one which is node number one in the json format reload and wow good so this retrieves the node one in json format as soon as i remove this um, query parameter underscore format equal to json 
the same node shows up but this time fully rendered HTML while with underscore format equal to JSON it is JSON now this is hard to read I mean there's a lot this is heavily packed so to make it easy to read uh, you should install a, a Chrome app called postman so I have that, that the postman right here so let me just show you foo.demo node slash one and wait what happened did I make a mistake foo demo d8 node one for my json wait oh this is post sorry I should be doing get okay there it is this is the same information as this but this is very hard to read using postman I am issuing a get request to the same URL and hitting send and all that and the same thing gets become I mean it, it parses the JSON in a more readable format it pretty prints it so as you can see this tab is called pretty print if you go to raw tab I see the same thing that I saw in the browser let's go back to pretty so this is far more readable so now let's understand what we are getting back <coughs> what we are getting back is more or less the structure of the node itself pretty detailed structure now how do you know if this is really the structure of the node we can find that out by going here oops sorry by going to the node itself and if we had devel module enabled we would see the structure of the node the data structure in memory data structure so let's do that let's enable the devel module so as soon as i enable dev remember devel generate we enabled we did not enable devel itself so now we have enabled both if i refresh this page i will have a new tab here doing it right I come it didn't show up hmm. uh, how come devil did not show up okay yeah so I had to clear cache to see the extra tab so as soon as I cleared cache, I can see this tab called devel. So when you go to devel tab, you see this is the that's the um, PHP data structure that represents the node. Um, if I look at the definition tab, okay. So this is ID node links bundle. This is rather wonky. It's very hard to read. Um, but, um, so this is not. Oh, oh, wait, I want to see load then. Hmm. This is a uh, hmm, in preview. Okay. Uh, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense but here body x default 0 value so body 0 value I don't know what x default is but body has 0 and it has value and similar on the other side here you see body has multiple uh, the at index 0 that is you have this object in which has value it has format and summary so this more or less uh, reflects not exactly but it more or less uh, reflects the structure of the node as it is held in memory okay so now let's see why is this even useful imagine that you're writing a jquery or react.js or angular.js application and you have this if you if all you had was this version of this rendered version is rendered HTML version of the node it wouldn't be as useful because it would be very hard to separate the title from 
the author from the body and so on and so forth so so a javascript based application will not will will be stuck with separating all these things and it would definitely make some mistakes it won't work on the other hand when javascript based application receives this kind of data it finds it extremely easy to parse so let me pause for a second okay so um, we are able to retrieve the node using postman by simply putting format equal to json and or sim uh, without using postman i can simply say underscore format equal to json and i can see the json version of the node unfortunately it's not very readable so that's why we use postman okay now i can go to a different node id i can say okay yeah give, give me node number 2 and i hit send and i get a different node and like that i can go but uh, back here in rest resources configuration let's go and edit and we see get is enabled json is, is retrieve retrieval and cookie authentication now let's also enable post but before we enable post let's just try to do it without enabling it so what i will do is i will copy this entire um, body of the of the node so control a and then copy wait I did not select all why is copy not enabled oh I don't know why it's not enabled uh, hmm. Mm, how about raw? Okay, then it is enabled. Okay. Copy. And now I want to do post instead of get. So I do post. But when I do post, uh, let me enable post first. And there, the post is on ent slash entity slash node, not on slash node. Okay, so which means we have to change this URL to slash entity slash node. And mm, I'm not sure of how to send the body like that. Uh, so I don't know how to use Postman properly. So instead of using Postman, I will use curl. So just like that, curl can do this, uh, where you say method is get, and then the URL is http who dot and demo dot d8, right? And load slash one and store format equal to JSON. So so then curl is retrieving the same thing. I I use curl because it's a command line browser. It's easier to use. So if I now replace that with post and keep everything same except of course I have to change the URL to entity slash node. Okay. I don't even have to say format equal to JSON, I think. Uh, we'll see. And then one very important thing is I have to specify data. And the data comes from a file. So let me man curl and see how to get data from a file. Uh, there is a way to do it to retrieve data from a file. Let me just Google it. Curl data from file. So it says. Oh, at sign. We just say data and then the name of the um, at sign path to file. The so data slash path to file. Okay. So at sign basically. So let me put my data into slash tmp slash mm, node dot json. Oops. 
I did not copy it correctly. So let me copy that. Control A copy. And I am going to basically add greater than temp node.json. So and I am going to paste my node. So did you understand what I did? I basically went here, copied it, and then ran cat greater than slash tmp slash node.json and pasted the value. So as a result, it ended up saving it in slash tmp slash node.json. So that is the same same uh, node body. With this, I can now go back to curl and I can say curl issue a post request and the path is foo.demo.t8 entity node and then pick up your data from at slash tmp slash node.json. Let's see if this works. Let's also do minus v so verbose you can see what's going on. Okay, so here it says uh, what's the error? HTTP 100 continue. Okay, HTTP 415 unsupported media type. Okay, so it doesn't understand how to it doesn't realize that this is JSON. So we have to tell it that it's JSON by saying minus H capital H is the header content type application JSON. Now it says 400 bad request. It doesn't understand the request. So at least the previous problem disappeared but it doesn't uh, like oh yes of course we have to we have we made a big mistake we assigned a node id we shouldn't in fact we should make this as minimalistic as possible so if you see the node uh, so remove the need value it has no place Again, UUID is something that that Drupal is going to generate. So let's get rid of UUID. In fact, we'll remove everything except title and body and type. So let's do that. Uh, we will remove VID, lag code. We will keep the type because that tells the uh, content type of the node. So that that is article. Target type is node type. That's fine. Target UUID. No, no, no more ta target UUID. I'm trying to strip strip out everything that is not absolutely needed. Status value is true. We will let it take the default. And let's keep the title. Yes, title we want. Okay, so hold on. Wait, did it finish? Oh, this has to be balanced correctly we didn't close that yeah so this has to close properly okay title we are keeping the title of value let's see my new rest node is the title uid let's let it assign the uid on its own uh, again whoever target UUID URL let's let it assign the URL also creation value all these things I'm removing I'm only going to keep the body promote sticky everything goes away revision timestamp goes away I'm just deleting everything that I that I think is not needed okay so path also I'm going to leave Okay, no pass. All right, so here comes body. So there is value of the body. This is going to be long. So we will, so it ends here, right? So let's just go from the beginning. All the way to the end. And there it is. The body has been blanked. Wait, why is the summary like that? Okay, ah, doesn't matter. Okay, so there, there's the end of, of the body, and here's the end of the node. So, we will say body of rest 
node, new line, and then line two. Okay. So we trim down the entire JSON to as little as possible. So we have type target ID article, target type is node type, then title with a value in it, and then body with a value in it, and has a format of plain text. That's it. This is all we have. Save and put. Let's see if we can make this work. Ah, something showed up. What is this? Access denied. Excellent. This is what we were hoping to see. This means that now we are missing the cookie. So remember we set the um, per authentication to cookie, but we are not in including. So obviously without the cookie, we are the anonymous user. <laughs> An anonymous user is not allowed to create new nodes, of course. So to, to figure out what is our, what is, so I'm going to borrow the session cookie from this session that I have so that I can post it as the admin user. So if I inspect element, go to the network tab and look at the cookie, there is a cookie. And I just copy the value of that cookie. Okay, back here, I add a header for cookie equal to this cookie. So now I have the same exact cookie, which means uh, the request coming from curl is equivalent to the request coming from my Chrome browser here. Let's see if this works. What's he saying? It's hard to say it's what's going on. You are not authorized to access this page again. Okay. So why is that? Entity node. Should we add question mark format equal to JSON? Let's try this. Ah, no, it's still 403. Four okay, it says XCSRF token request header is missing. I see. So, yeah, so uh, we are making progress. So this is, this is a very good sign. We had to add format equal to JSON underscore format. But now it says XCSRF RF token request header is missing. This is the... Uh, this is to say that uh, I am not only I am authorized users, I am also an application which is not trying to see X CSRF means cross site request forgery. I am not a request forger. So, what you need is uh, Drupal requires you to add a, uh, what is it? I think uh, I forget. I forget where it is, I think it's in rest or something. Let's, um, you, you need to obtain a token from, from Drupal. So, and I'm trying to remember what, where that was. So hold on, I, I know where that is. The, I have the code somewhere here. Give me one second. Mm. Token. Okay, it's called a rest session token. This is the path. So when you go to this path on Drupal, which is the rest session token right there, you get a token. This token is required to be sent as XCSRF token. 
So we will talk about why, what CSRF is, etc. in a second. But let's just make the curl request work first. So you can say another, add another header called X CSRF token, and then paste that token and go. Look at that! I think it worked this time. You see node ID value 51. And this is the location. So open link. And there you see my new REST node. Body of REST node. Line number 2. Okay. So here we, we were able to create new uh, a new node by now let's review the request again curl minus v as in verbose request method is post url is slash entity node underscore question mark underscore format equal to json then you have to specify content type application json you have to give it uh, the complete body of the request since we are reading it from a file you say add sign file name instead of just just the name then you have to give it the authentication cookie and finally you have to give it the xcsrf token which itself you retrieve by going to rest session token now once you issue a post request like that you it ends up creating a new node with that title and that body mm. So, you can imagine that instead of using curl, if we were using a jQuery based JavaScript application or React.js or AngularJS, any kind of JavaScript application and issuing the same request, we would have created the node as well. Which means we would be creating con managing content within Drupal without using the Drupal's UI. Okay. And also we can be retrieving this information. Uh, from Drupal by uh, by saying you know node path format so question mark format underscore format equals yes and you get the um, that node ID in a JSON format okay so that's that's something so let me pause for a second all right so a question was asked that uh, well here i manually went to the to the path and then copied the token and then i manually uh, got the cookie also from the network stack request and i went here and i got the cookie from from this place right uh, this is so contrived, you know, in real world when you're writing JavaScript based application, you're not going to do any of these things. You cannot do these things. Well, the answer is this. As far as the cookie is concerned, if you serve your JavaScript from the same web server, then, uh, and from the same host name, food.demo.ad8 in this case, then whatever cookies that Drupal assigns to your browser, that cookie will be sent by the browser even when it is not talking to Drupal, even when it is talking to the RESTful service, or even when it is downloading the JavaScript-based application and some index.html that came with the JavaScript-based application. Because we are on the same host name, the same cookies will be sent back by the browser. So, in other words, as long as your the URL of your application is foo.demo.d8 slash my js app right something like that and that if your javascript application is being served from this url the browser will send back the same cookies as it was sending to drupal which is good right so that's number one so therefore you will not have to actually manually include some in some contrived way artificially include the cookie in every request it will just be automatically uh, included simply because you are with it you're on the same site as far as the browser is concerned as far as uh, the browser is concerned you are on the same site talking to the same server although in reality you are talking to a different application 
same first one was Drupal and this one is a JavaScript based application so that's why cookie is not a big concern second question was okay fine cookie is taken care of what about this token the answer is equally simple you can you could issue a an ajax request to this path which is i mean rest slash session slash token you could issue a, a get request there so if you copy this right and then tell curl or any application to say hey get me this of course we got the same same cookie <laughs> so which means without any other information uh, without any so you could issue a, an ajax request to this url and you will get the same cookie uh, same same token I, I meant and now you can use this token as your x csrf token value okay so wait hold on this thing wait wait it, it gave you a different a different value of the token okay so that's a problem to get the same exact value of the token you can send the cookie the same cookie if you send the same cookie let's see rest session token if you send the same and this is no longer a post it's a get and now we don't have to issue content type There will be no node data body and we just we do need to keep the same cookie value and no need for x csrf because we are trying to re uh, retrieve that token so now when you do that i got this is that same as this yes it is look i sent the same cookie i got the same token which is this right if i issue the same request again this time without minus v let's say i get the same token as you can see so okay so the point is when your javascript which has the same cookie issues a request for the token it will get the same token that you would have got yourself okay so that's how you maintain your cookie cookie maintains your session and that's how you maintain the rest token also X CSR token as well because you have the same cookie and therefore the same session okay so now we have seen how we can retrieve a, a, an individual nodes as well as uh, create an individual node but here's the problem uh, in what if you wanted to retrieve a list of nodes uh, and for that matter a list of anything okay so by the way before we proceed let me just show you that this is not the only thing um, one second I need to pause so I wanted to show you that uh, in addition to this resource there are other resources so um, like for example if I enable let's say the user uh, service so this one if I enable that and I say okay yeah I want to get I want to get as JSON and with the cookie authentication then now I can say user one of course that's admin question mark underscore format equal to JSON and now you got all the information about admin so so this is not just limited to nodes you can get users and you can get other things you know there is a very long list so i highly encourage you to enable all of these one after the other and try them out okay. so let's go back to the previous question that i asked how do i get a list of nodes and not one node so for that you have to ask yourself the question how do you get a list of anything in drupal and the answer is views so if I go to structure views there is already a, um, a view called front page which basically if you when you go it gives you the front page the default front page that 
on slash node right so what we can do is we can take this view so this is something new in Drupal 8 in Drupal 7 front page was you know implemented through some co custom code uh, in Drupal core now the front page is simply a view so we edit this front page view and we will add a new display called the rest export this rest export is it shows up only because I have enabled rest as a module and we will give it a path Your, so look at this you first go into format serializer settings there are no other formats by the way enabled this is the only serializer is the only format here okay and in settings you enable JSON make sure you are applying to this uh, only this display okay so apply that and now you have to give it a path the path the front page path is node so for our purposes we will call ours uh, node slash rest apply that and automatically it will show only 10 items by default I save that and when I save it now I can go to node slash rest and I get the same stuff of course this is too long and very hard to read so it's better to uh, do it in postman we go here we go to make it get and then say pretty yeah there it is so you see this is one node and these each one is a node right and there should be 10 of these okay yeah so there are I think there are 10 of them because that's that's the limit we set in the views definition so this is how you get a list of these nodes but as you can see this was a huge list too much going on I mean what if we I just want summary information I don't want uh, the full body of each node okay so then to do achieve that I have to go back to the view and modify it from showing the full entity instead of entity show individual fields and make sure you apply it to only this display not all displays okay so let's add some fields it says so we will say I want to get the NID yeah so that's the content ID is NID and I want to get the title which is this and let's say I want to get the path which is this the apply this says apply to all displays no apply to only this display apply to this display and now it says this is the node ID content ID and that's fine apply to this display next is the path apply and finally the title so title is link to the content no we, do, we don't want to link to the content let me show you without unchecking that without unchecking it it creates something very very weird title is basically HTML angle bracket a href equal to blah 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 that's that's obviously not what we wanted so therefore we go to title and say no don't make it a link and just make it a simple title and there now we have title with the actual value right the other thing you'll notice is look how slashes are being escaped with a back, backslash this is oh, don't be afraid this is the way it's this this is okay uh, for JSON this is meant to be for JSON mm, intentional so when JSON gets parsed it will take care of the, the escaped paths so let's save this and when we go back here and we uh, refetch we get much more manageable size 
more much more manageable amount of data as you can see the um, the escapes disappeared because this is pretty printed in raw they, they are still there but in pretty printed the escapes are gone so there you go okay so so in other words if you want a list of nodes you have to customize it you have to create a view with a rest export display type um, okay so at this point we have seen how to enable rest how to enable rest ui what to do in rest ui so go to meaning to say we go to the rest resources and here we enable certain things um, we have spoken about how to enable uh, cookie authentication now there is a different authentication also uh, called basic authentication cookie authentication means send the same cookie that, a, that an authenticated uh, session has and that works only if your application is in the same browser same uh, website uh, same server as the uh, drupal application then it all works fine so in the same browser if you are logged into drupal and the application is being served from the same uh, web server um, same host then cookie authentication is fine but what if you had to log in with a user, username and password so let me show you how to do that you can go to extend and you have to enable a new module called basic authentication here http basic authentication if you enable that module then then you'll see that back and in the resource configuration you can go and edit and now you've got a new authentication provider called basic underscore auth if you check that checkbox now you will be able to authenticate yourself not just with a cookie but also with by providing your username password in form of a basic authentication header now you may say what what is that um, and here uh, I'll explain in a second uh, let's first go to people and um, take any any uh, let's go to the admin user and change the password okay so I don't even know what the password is of this admin user so let me just change the password here rush user dash password of user id1 password equals fubar that's it simple admin user has a password fubar i just change the password so with this now if i log out and log in i want to i'm just trying to make sure that i i can i'm just logging out and i log in i'm typing my password as fubar okay so yeah it works good now that i've set that password i will um, see if i can uh, create the uh, remember we had created the node so if i say post again so i can obviously it's not going to work with the uh, same cookie okay uh, we will have to use I mean my cookie has changed, my session has changed but anyway we don't want cookie authentication, we want basic authentication so I can do basic authentication by simply saying mm, take minus u then username password admin colon what was it? Fubar. Yeah. I think this is my username and password and let's see if this works so we are posting to format JSON entity node. Content type is application JSON. Data is coming from this file, and we are not going to use the cookie authentication. And I don't know whether CSRF token will work or not. We'll see. 
Ah, it worked. Wait, could not reverse all of the post. Oops. Hold on. Did it work? Yes, it worked. Value 52. Now, re rebuild URL to XCSRF token. I don't know what that that is. <laughs> I think we obviously made some mistakes on that. Oh, yeah. We, we made the mistake we did not put minus H in front of that. So it treated that as a host name. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so it works even now. Value equal 3. So it worked because we provided the username and password. Let me mess up the password on purpose so that it fails. And it does look 403. So as long as we provide... So this is based on basic authentication. Now you may say, yes, but still I don't understand what basic authentication is. So instead of providing a user name and password like this, you could instead provide a header. And that header is, is the name of the header is authorize. The value of the header is, sorry, sorry. Value of the header is the type of authorization which is basic and then the value of that authorization is the username colon password encoded as base 64 so now you may say what let me explain you basically base 64 encode this username admin colon password and base 64 encoded so to do that we say echo and that pass it through base 64 encoder that's your base 64 encoding there is one problem though when you do echo you not only keep the strings you also add a new line that's you don't want to keep the new line so you instead say echo minus n admin fuba now uh, now if you pass this through a base 64 encoder what you get this is the base 64 encoded version of this string and that is what you are supposed to include here in the basic authorization header let's go back to curl and include that same header and no authentication credentials provided for long so that's author it's not authorized I think it's authorization authorization let me check that yes it was authorization not authorized so the <laughs> this is a far more complicated way of saying this is my username and password you can basically this whole thing you know this whole header can be replaced this entire thing can be replaced by simply saying use this username password this is one way of saying. The other way is this, where this is the base 64 encoding of username colon password string. So that's that's. Now you may say, wait, why would I use basic authentication? How will this work? And then the original, the previous question that was asked comes back. Really, you think? JavaScript is going to do all this stuff? <laughs> no, JavaScript is not going to do this. JavaScript can simply supply a username pa and password and the underlying browser will take care of converting it to uh, this basic authorization. But anyway, overall I do agree that this is basic authentication is not realistic. Who is going to give their username and password to a JavaScript based application? It's a very bad idea, right? Plus, of course, uh, the base 64 encoding is as good as plain text. Anybody can decode it. So for all those reasons, ba basic authentication is not that practical. It is far more practical to even do cookie-based authentication because you, it's not very, very difficult to use the same browser that is locked into Drupal and the same web server that is serving Drupal. So as long as you are using the same browser and the same web server or the same host, 
that is serving Drupal, you can use cookie authentication. And that's good enough, I think, for, the, for in many cases. Finally, there are other authentication methods besides cookie and basic authentication, uh, such as OAuth, OAuth2, and JWT, which is JSON Web Token. So let me just list them. OAuth, OAuth2, and then JWT, which is JSON Web Token. So these are the other ones. Uh, and there are more, more than this. Uh, you can see them here in Postman. Postman UI basically tells you um, this. No auth, basic auth, digest auth, OAuth 1, OAuth 2, Hawk, AWS signature. I don't know why it doesn't have JWT in there, but it's, it's also one of the authentication methods. There are too many, there are many, many options. We, we cannot cover those right now, but um, suffice it to say that there are. Okay, uh, at this point, I will stop, and then in the next session, we'll go further, we will write our own RESTful services maybe, and besides views, we will learn React.js, we'll probably write an application using jQuery first, and then um, maybe using React.js uh, and we will ex exploit the RESTful services that Drupal provides and then write a very interactive rich web application that is far more uh, you know slick smoother than Drupal itself alright so let's stop here